every Ableton stock plugin, which is in the standard version because I don't have suit in 15 minutes. So let's not waste any time and start right away with the instruments. Drum rack, just a simple rack so you can play things nicely on the trumpet or keyboard. Drag some samples in, which will open in a simpler, which I explain in a minute. Furthermore, you can link any parameter to these macros so you quickly can adjust everything you want. Drum synth. Perfect if you want some poorly synthesized drum sounds, for instance this cowbell. You can also track your own samples in and adjust them in this really simple sample. External instruments. This is just for working with hardware instruments. Since I don't have any, I can't show it. So if you want to know how to use it, I would strongly advise you to use any search engine of your choice. Impulse. Basically just a drum machine and one of Ableton's oldest plugins. Just like with the drum rack, you can drag some samples in and adjust them with the parameters available. Instrument rack. Just a simple rack where you can group instruments with some effects together. Like the drum rack, you can here also link parameter to macros or you can save the whole rack and use it sometime in the future as sort of a preset of instruments and effects. Simpler. The last Ableton stock instrument here on this list and one of the most important ones. Simpler is basically just a sampler. You can choose between classic mode where the sound stops if you stop pressing the button. One shot where it doesn't matter if you stop pressing the button, it will keep running anyway. And slice where it splits the sample up and you can play the individual parts. You can also adjust a lot of things like the warp modes or a lot of things in this control window. So let's get to a new section, the largest section, the audio effects. First one, beat repeat, beat repeat. This one just takes the signal and repeats it in any given rate. You can also adjust how the repeat should sound with a filter, pitch and my favorite pitch decay. Delay. delay. What should delay. I say? Just the delay. You can change the rate either sync to the BPM or simply with the MS here. Yet again you can play around with the filter and these different modes. My favorite mode of course, the ping pong. Ping -pong. Filter delay. delay. Just three delays, one for the left, one for the middle and one for the right, which you can separately filter how you like. I once put a heavy dubstep bass sample on it and it sounded kinda dope. <laughs> Brain, brain delay. delay. Very beautiful plugin. Here you can assign different parameters like spray, frequency, pitch, random pitch, feedback, drive at, delay time and feedback to this XY pad and play around with it. <laughs> Looper. Um, yeah, you can loop stuff. Just record and then it plays it back. I already made a pretty in-depth video about that where I show you how I use this looper plugin to play multiple instruments at once. So if you want to learn more about this looper, you can watch that. Nice, nice new follow. <laughs> drum bus. Take a drum or any other sound and it goes from boom to boom. You can adjust some things like drive, boom, short and transients, pretty simple stuff. Dynamic tube. An emulation of tube distortion adding a nice warmth to your sound. You have three different tube emulations you can choose from. A, B and C. Erosion. You can add noise to any frequency you like. You can add white noise, which is stereo. And you can add a sine wave and add some tonal flavor. Overdrive. Yeah, it just takes the sound and it starts the shit out of it. Maybe even more. Redux. So without getting too techno here, the raid knob gives you this bad signal kind of vibe and the bit knob basically completely crushes the sound and makes everything a bit more staccato. Unless you activate the DC shift then it doesn't. Saturation. Basically, if you want to make things louder or a little bit distorted, saturation is the way to go. You can adjust the drive and a lot of other stuff down there. And don't forget, if you don't want your tracks to turn red, turn on the soft clip. Vinyl distortion. Adds this nice vinyl vibe to the sound. Great if you want to make lo-fi, you can even add some nice crackles. Oh no, the dynamics. Compressor. Yeah, it's a compressor. If you don't know what the compressor is, it basically takes everything above this threshold here and pushes it down. How far does it push it down? Depends on this ratio up here. How fast does the pushing down happen and how long does it last? The answer lies in the attack and the release. The gate. Basically a gate only lets audio through that is loud enough or you flip it and it only lets audio through that is quiet enough. 
and what counts as loud or quiet enough is determined by the threshold. Glue compression. Simple compress again with a nice little makeup knob to make things louder. And if you don't want it to clip, soft clip. I especially like to use this while mastering to make tracks louder and more full and yeah. yeah. Nice. Limiter. If you want to make a whole signal louder and you don't want it to clip or distort, using a limiter is the way to go. The ceiling determines how loud everything should be and the gain is how much you want to push the signal to the ceiling. Be careful, if you push the gain too far, you will end up with an overcompressed brick wall without any dynamics. No, not good in most cases. Multiband dynamics. With a multiband compressor you can compress the low, mid and high frequencies individually. You can adjust the threshold here, you can adjust the deck and release here and you can even solo the different frequencies. And then you have the most important multiband compressor preset of all time. OTT. You can take almost every sound, put OTT on it and it will sound fat and juicy. Never forget to turn up the output a little bit. In case the sound isn't fat enough, use 2 OTT or 3 or 30. You can even put some OTT or 10 to 20% of it on orchestral instruments like strings or brass and it sounds dope. The EQ and the filters. Auto filter. So a nice little filter. You can choose from different filters and adjust them how you like. You can play around with the envelope and the amount. And most importantly, you can choose in which shape the filter should be played and at which rate it should be played. Stupid sentence. Channel EQ. Yeah, just an EQ. You can boost or cut low, mid and high frequencies. Pretty simple. Basically just the same plugin as EQ3. However, you can do some nice creative things with EQ3. You can take a lot of EQ3 and you will end up with this pew pew disperser sound. You can also make an audio effect track. I will explain how that works later. So that you can easily turn on a lot of EQ3s and change the low frequency mode of every single one of them with one knob this Macria. EQ8. Probably your go-to tool if you want to boost or cut any frequencies. Easiest way to use it is to just click and drag these little dots around. You can choose what kind of cut filters you want to use down here and you can adjust the frequencies, gain and quality controls over there. This little headphone thing here lets you hear what you change and where it gets really interesting are the mode options. Stereo is just a normal EQ thing. Left right lets you EQ the left and right side separately and mid side lets you EQ the mono and stereo part of the sound separately. Okay, let us get to the weird stuff. The modulators. Envelope follower. Before I started making this video, I didn't even use this plugin once, but this is crazy. Just take some drums for instance, throw the envelope follower on it and it will track the transients of the drums. Then push the map button, go to a different plugin on a different track and map the envelope follower to any knob you like. In my case, I threw this Redux on a synth playing a simple diminished chord. And now the rate of the Redux is linked to the transient of the drums. Yeah, this is sick. LFO basically works the same way. You can change rate and shape and then map this whole thing to any parameter. Yeah. Shaper. Yeah, the exact same thing like the LFO, but you can draw your own shapes, which is nice. Next folder. Auto pen. The name pretty much says it all. You can also turn the face down to zero to get a simple volume automation. Especially good to clean up PC drum parts. Chorus ensemble. A chorus takes your signal, duplicates that and delays it, creating this effect. So what is important here? The rate, the amount and the feedback. Then you have three different modes. Classic, yeah, classic chorus. Ensemble, here the signal gets duplicated a little bit more, smooths out everything a little bit. And vibrato, which plays around with the pitch of the signal and when you turn up the rate it sounds kind of funny. Not kind of funny. So a phaser and a flanger is kind of similar to a chorus. Not exact similar. I don't want to get in too much detail how it exactly works, but this is how it sounds. There's also this doubler which creates some interesting weirdness. Shifter, one of my absolute favorites, awesome for any kind of sound design. 
The pitch mode is pretty basic, makes stuff lower, makes stuff higher. Frequency shifting on the other hand takes the entire frequency spectrum and shifts it up or down. The ring modulation is great to add some tonality to everything even if it isn't tonal at all. When it comes to the properties you can use the fine knob to do some more detailed changes. If you hit the white knob you end up with a nice stereo sound and the LFO gives you yet again some vibrato. So now the reverb and resonance and let's start with the resonators. Here you can add any note to anything. When you play around with different parameters you can even add chords or get a weird metallic effect. Reverb. You have a dry signal, you want room, use reverb. Um, most important thing to adjust are the size, the size of the virtual room you put your sound in. The decay, how long the reverb should do its reverbing. And the dry wet knob determines how much reverb is mixed in with the dry signal. Vocoder. So the vocoder takes some audio and replaces it with some other stuff like noise. Or you can choose the external thing here. Choose a track, in this case a track with a synth playing a chord. And the audio will be replaced by the sound of the synth. You can also play around with the modulator and pitch tracking and any other knob on here, basically. Utility. Align delay. The purpose of this is to delay sounds a bit with adjusting the time or with help of the sample rate or with the distance. You can even change the temperature because it apparently changes the speed of sound in the air when, when it's hot and or cold. I don't know. Audio effect rack. Works just like the instrument rack but without an instrument. You can just group audio effects together, assign some macro knobs and save the whole thing for later use. External audio effect for external hardware stuff. Spectrum. This thing is useful. You can see the whole frequency spectrum but it's pretty simple and self-explanatory. Let's not waste too much time here. <laughs> If you record some stuff with a guitar or bass or an electric violin or something like that and the instrument is out of tune, use a tuner. It's that simple. Utility. This is a great and helpful tool. You can listen to the left and right channel individually and you can even swap them. You can make the whole thing mono. With the width you can determine how much stereoness you want. But my absolute favorite thing is the bass mono. With that you can say everything below 120 hertz or whatever hertz you want is mono. So now you have a nice clean mono bass and the rest is stereo and it's top. You could also do that with mid side EQ, remember EQ8. Uh, but this makes everything a little more simple and convenient. <laughs> so finally all the audio effects are explained so let's get to the last category the MIDI effects. Apeciator. It takes a normal note or chord and transforms it into a nice scale chord rundown thing. You can change the rate, gate, choose the scale, and up, down, and so on and so forth. Chord. Takes a note and makes a chord out of it. You can choose what notes to use with these shift knobs, that's it. Envelope MIDI. Works just like the envelope follower, just that it doesn't follow transients, but the MIDI signal instead. Expression control. Same concept here with expression control you can pretty much map all information that could be in the MIDI signal like velocity, pitch bend and mod will to a parameter. MIDI effect track. Yeah, you can group MIDI effects. That's it. MIDI monitor. Play literally any note you like on a keyboard and MIDI monitor will tell you what chord it is. Pretty useful. MPE control. This is only interesting if you have an MPE controller. If you have one, watch some other tutorials because I don't have any idea what this does. Note echo. You have a note and the note gets repeated. You can play around with the pitch note if you want a higher or lower note each repetition. Note length. You can change the length of a MIDI note. Pitch. You can change the pitch of a MIDI note. Random. You can randomly change the pitch of a MIDI note. Scale. With scale you can change what notes are played when you press a key on the keyboard. Down here are your keys of the keyboard and then you can assign notes to the key how you like. You can basically create a keyboard where every key plays the same note. Shaper MIDI. Works like the shaper I explained ages ago. The MIDI notes trigger a shape which is mapped to a parameter. Yeah, yeah, nice and nice. And now finally the last plugin. Velocity. Velocity basically controls the velocity. No shit. So you can play a little bit harder on your keyboard and still get a softer sound. For that use the high knob. Or you can play soft and get a hard and loud sound. Use the out low knob for that. And that was everything that there is to say. All Ableton plugins explained 
Ja, nice, subscribe. And like, and comment, and follow me in this. Yeah, I explained everything a little bit too fast, so we're not at 15 minutes yet, so I have to talk here a little bit, because it would bother me hard when the title says 15 minutes and it's 14.40. So, yeah, sorry for that here, for this little monologue, but yeah, uh, subscribe or something.